Okay, so this is going to be a quick demo on how to use uh, Adobe Audition for recording your voice. So what I want to show you today is how to record and edit in both the single track and multi-track editor. One thing to note before we begin recording is how you set up your hardware. And I'm assuming that most of you will either be using your built-in microphone for on your laptop or um, uh, or maybe you've plugged in a headset, uh, but you want to make sure that you've checked it so that it, it is uh, set up in the right um, channels and interface for uh, Adobe Audition. So to do that, you're going to want to come over here to the edit drop down menu and go into preferences and then you can uh, select select general but specifically we're, we're talking about audio audio hardware so let me click that and we can see this pop-up of all the preferences uh, shows up with on the left hand side a menu and you can uh, select all these different options to change your preferences for each of them but for audio hardware we want to just make sure that your input is whatever microphone you have connected to your computer now i only have this blue yeti uh, microphone and so that's the only option there it's at, it's set as my default input you may have other options that um, that would show up here and then you want to select whichever one you're deciding to use and then for output my my headphones actually come out of this um, microphone so my output is here and yours probably would be something something similar or maybe it's just the default out, output so with that set we're happy and then also you want to just make sure that your channel mappings uh, map to the to the correct place so i'm just using this microphone um, as a mono channel so it's just going to be left in the left uh, uh remain in the left channel uh channel one, track one and then the output is uh as i said before these uh the 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 audio goes through the yeti microphone so it's you know my speakers basically are through the microphone i know that it doesn't make sense but just understand that uh, my headphones are the speakers and my headphones are connected to this microphone so that's how i'm listening so with that set up we should be good to go we'll um, hit ok and then we can get on to recording to begin an audition, it's really simple and only a few clicks to actually get recording. So if you come up to the file menu and go to new, you can get over here and choose either a multi-track session or a audio file, which is actually just the single track. Um, and so this will probably be the easiest to start with. Once we've clicked there, we're going to give it a new, uh, our new file a name and let's just call this um, uh, take one and now with that file name in place we're good and the sample rate will probably default at 44 one but it's um, it's good to know that actually this is more for uh, when you're recording without any video, it's a lower uh, hertz sample rate. And when you're starting to do video, you actually want to author at uh, 48K. Um, that's similar to the bit depth uh, that we have here, but it's actually um, just basically giving you more dynamic range for the sound that you're going to record. Now, if you weren't going to do anything with video, if you were just doing, say, a podcast or some other, um, you know, back in the day recording for CD or authoring to iTunes or Spotify, then 44.1 would be the way to go. But uh, since we're going, we're planning on using this for video, let's go ahead and choose a 40, 48K. Now channels, we can do stereo, but it actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you're just recording your, your own voice. Uh, you know, your voice is a single source of audio. Um, you, you can't project into two, two uh, you know, headphones at the same time. Now you can always, um, you can always change the setting later. You can always um, 
change it to stereo at a later point, but you might as well record in mono while you're doing your uh, speaking. Uh, that way it ends up being recorded in one channel. When it, you know, when the, when you go into the edit, you'll be able to change that to stereo when you're processing. But for now as recording, let's just keep that at mono and 32 bit, uh, float is fine. That's going to give us as, as much, uh, headroom as we need, uh, for this recording. Um, if you're having trouble, you can, you can try to choose a lower bit rate and that might help if your machine, if your computer is, uh, lagging or something to that effect. So I'll hit okay here. And now we can see how the, uh, the new, waveform indicator pops up here in this uh, panel above and then below here we would have another uh, I think it's the spectral uh, waveform but up top we have the waveform um, panel and then you'll see the name of our our take is uh, take one here with a star meaning it hasn't been saved uh, once we save it let's go ahead and click Control S, and I'm gonna browse to a place in my in my uh, hard drive here that I have an external hard drive, and we'll just go ahead and save it in there uh, under Take One. That's fine. We're gonna save it as uh, a WAV format for now. Uh, I'm on a PC, so this works well for me. Um, and we'll go ahead and hit Save and you can see the settings are all there and uh, we don't need to change any of those so we'll go ahead and press ok all right now you see the asterisk is gone and we can start recording so real quick uh, uh, one thing you need to test are your levels and of course levels has to do with the um, the input volume that is coming in from the microphone into the software and right now we can't see any but if we double click now we can see a test for how the levels are and as you can see I'm hitting in the yellow range and usually that's pretty good green is obviously go uh, but we want to get a full range and without clipping whereas if I get too close you can see that the red starts popping up a little bit I'll, I'll back up off the microphone again so I'm pretty happy with the levels the way they are there's a little peaking and there's a little bit dropping back but uh, that's okay um, we can fix some of that in post so after I've set this up, I'm ready to record. So let's go ahead and just do a test uh, take. This is a test recording for MAT 120 on how to record your voice in Adobe Audition. So after you've recorded a bit of dialogue or your script or whatever the case may be, your voiceover, you um, just hit the stop button there, very simple, and then you see that you have your waveform um, displayed up top. And below it, we have a spectral version of that form, and this will go into more detail later. Uh, if you need to do more editing, Audition has some amazing tools for editing in the uh, spectral waveform there. So what we can see here is that the uh, take is highlighted in white and selected. So it does that by default. If I click off, now I've just clicked once and it's not highlighted any longer. What this allows me to do then is go ahead and click and drag and I can select a part of the take that I wanna, wanna listen back uh, to. So here I'll just hit the play button. This, this is, is a test recording for so you can see how the waveform uh, is plays through as uh, I hit the play button and you could hear the playback uh, at that time. So if I wanted to ch uh, change uh, or test another section, we'll just highlight that section by clicking and dragging with the uh, mouse and then I'll MAT play. 120 on how to record your voice. So I didn't even have to hit stop. So there you go, that's all you need to know in order to record your voice, step one done. Now what we wanna do is make sure that we save it again. As you can see, the asterisk here is denoting that it is a, there, ha, there are changes that have not been saved, which you will see 
you know, uh, in many software. So here I'll come back down and I'll just do a save, which normally I would use the hotkeys, but for this purpose, I used the, the drop downs there. So now we have our first recording. One thing I should mention is that uh, how this interface is set up. Um, obviously, that helps you navigate through the application, but if, uh, if you're used to any of the other Adobe software, you kind of get how they lay things out, um, and this is no different um, from the whole Creative Cloud suite. Uh, over here, you'll see similar to Adobe uh, Premiere that you have your media browser and here you can select your different folders and uh, different media storage that's uh, that is uh, connected to your computer. Now when you change tabs you can get over to some of the uh, effects and other properties that will uh, show information based on the recording that you're working on. Um, up top here, you'll have your current session and which uh, different takes you've uh, you've done. Um, and below, there's a, a, a history. And when you're editing videos sometimes or editing audio to video, you'll see a video preview here. Now, across the top in the middle here, we have this... Uh, timeline which shows the entire take and if you'll notice there's actually these this gray outline that's around the uh, the waveform in this top toolbar uh, uh, navigator we'll call it and when you pull the handles in on that navigator navigator you can see that you're getting closer look at the waveform in the waveform uh, display here and the spectral display below that and this is good because it's like zooming in on your uh, your image if you're doing uh, image editing um, and then that way you can choose more specific parts that you might need to edit out or to shift or add some sort of correction or effects to um, and all I'm doing here to select that is to left click and drag and I'm able to select a, a portion of the waveform. Now another thing is if I scroll with my scroll wheel, I'm doing that now, as I scroll up, I'm zooming in and as I'm scrolling down, it's zooming out. And so basically that, you know, you might be able to do that with your Mac by holding uh, command and, and uh, scrolling or something to that effect. On the PC, you have the three buttons, so it makes it a lot easier. Um, let's see. Another thing to, dis to uh, discuss is the tools at the bottom here. And I think most of you probably understand that, you know, these are your, your typical controls for playback, pause, uh, skipping backwards, rewinding, fast forwarding, skipping ahead, recording, and then looping your playback here, of course. Um, and then this would skip a selection if you wanted to, if you had selections made. Um, here you can use the uh, buttons at the bottom to do the zooming. Um, and that just is going to change the display of the audio uh, waveform. And you'll see that basically it's changing the scale but it's not changing the actual uh, the actual um, waveform uh, amplitude. So by amplitude, I mean you know here we have the the baseline and up to negative twelve on this clip here. Now, if I go to zoom in, you can see negative twelve has just increased uh, its visual representation. It hasn't actually increased the amplitude of the sound itself. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I don't don't want to get too nerded out here with that stuff, but this is a way for you to kind of get a better sense of of uh, what the what the waveform looks like and what it's doing. Okay, so and then here on the right hand side, there would be other tools and uh, plugins that you might be able to use. We we don't need it right now. Um, on the bottom, we have the levels, which uh, which. Many times people will end up using the or placing the levels over to the right because a lot of sound engineers, um, you know, prefer to see their their levels vertical. So, you know, now we can kind of see it more like a typical audio program, right? And if you notice, the way that I changed that was just by clicking and dragging. You can usually grab towards the top, and then the uh, the panel will be able to dock in whichever place you want to put it. So go ahead and, and you know, 
shift things around a little bit, see how you like it. And if you ever need uh, to get back to the workspace that you had before, you can always go back and reset it to a saved layout or choose one of these um, one of these layouts that that is typically uh, saved in uh, in the defaults for for uh, for audition. OK, one other part of the interface that I should make sure to mention is this little floating um, tool here, which actually is a way for you to control the sound uh, amplitude of your recording. And now remember, if I write, uh, if I use my scroll wheel, I can zoom in and we can get a closer look at parts of the uh, waveform. Now I'll select the whole thing just so that we can do this on a uh, on the entire clip. Um, and actually, I think what is happening here is that I've only selected what I could see in the timeline. Yep, that was that was true. So I will zoom out here, and now you can see that I'm viewing the entire the entire clip because we have this uh, navigator indication um, up here. And I'll double click again, and now we can see the whole clip is uh, is highlighted or selected. And now with this, we can increase the amplitude of the voice uh, of the recording, right? So if you see, I can click and drag over the decibel uh, value here. And as, as I do that, the waveform increases in amplitude. And now amplitude is the height against this, uh, the decibel levels here, right? So if I wanna decrease the, the decibels, I go down and I, and I pull it to the left. And if I pull it to the right, we increase the audio. So this would be helpful if there's a section in your audio that is really quiet or maybe just too loud. Um, and you can sort of generally change the uh, amplitude of the audio uh, by using this little floating tool. So if I play it back, it should be a bit louder in your earphones now. T120 on how to record your... So as you can tell, the audio got louder, and maybe this is a good place to leave it because then I know I can adjust it in the edit. At least it's a little bit higher. We've used this uh, you know, audio-centric pr program instead of the uh, video program to do any editing. Although, that being said, a lot of times the video editors these days will do a fine job for basic audio editing like that. So let's go ahead and talk about how we would edit this clip in case uh, we want to trim off parts of the uh, audio that's been recorded. So again, what I'll do is I'll take um, this selection tool, and as you can see, I guess it's called the time selection tool in Audition, and I'll just highlight uh, by left clicking and dragging this area, which is the lead up to the audio uh, or the speaking that I did. So now that I have it selected, I can just go ahead and press uh, cut here in the drop down in the edit menu, or actually delete might be even better because we're not going to paste this anywhere. So we can just straight up delete it instead of cutting it. So I'll hit delete and you can see it disappeared. No more, uh, no more breathing room at the front there which is which is okay for us and let's see about what's at the end here addition this is a test recording for mat 120 on how to record your voice in adobe audition so the end is fine i, I don't mind having that little bit of handle there but this little pause kind of throws me off so let's try that again and i'll hit delete this time and quickly it comes back and now I'll play it back again for MAT 120. So now you can see it's a bit of a shorter gap, makes the audio uh, track a little snappier. And I will go ahead and click save because I'm happy with the way that that's going. You saw it took a second to save the audio there. And now we can move on to the next step. I should actually mention that if you make a mistake, you can always use control Z or edit undo and that audio will come back, right? So if I hit delete, it's gone. And if I hit control Z, it's back. So that's a quick uh, note, just in case you make a mistake while you're doing this, you can hit control Z. So not a bad thing to know. So essentially, that's all you need to know to get started with recording your voice in Adobe Audition. Now, let's quickly hop over to the multi-track uh, editing uh, 
window in order to show you how you might layer some audio together or if you want to take multiple clips how you can put those next to each other um, just for the sake of this i will create another um, single track take and we'll call this one take two i'll keep it all the same settings as the last one and you'll see now we have take two over on the left hand side it's not saved and this there's the uh, the asterisk and let me do a quick check on my levels by double clicking okay I see that my levels are okay on the mic um, and I will record so this is just a second take for audio uh, recording in audition so that was a quick one. Obviously, I stumbled and, and said uh, in there in the middle. I think it was here. Uh, and so I'm going to quickly go ahead and delete that. Boom, that's gone. And let's actually take out even more. So we got that video recording and we can, you know, we can zoom in and really get close. Right. And so I'm zooming in with my scroll wheel Then I hit delete to um, to delete that. And then it's back to or audio recording. In OK. So here we see, and you know what? I'll just do that for the sake of uh, cleanliness. Trimming these guys. All right, and now I shall save it, which I'll go ahead and show you I'm doing. Control save, I'll keep it at take uh, 02, Matt 120 demos, all this is groovy. Boom, okay, now it's saved. Now, what we wanna do is hop over into the multi-track editor, and uh, but to do that, it's easy and simple. Just go ahead and click that button. Now, it wants to create a new session, and this is sort of your recording session. You'll wanna pay attention to where you're saving um, this session so that later on, you'll be able to find it if you need to, and also in case uh, your hard drive is filling up, you'll wanna know where you can locate your files. So. I'm going to go ahead and call it um, tutorial one and no template sample rates the same as the recorded ones. OK, the master will be uh, stereo, right? So this will be stereo now because we are planning on doing a stereo mix, which will have, uh, you know, left and right channels. But um, you'll see how that goes in the next section. So now you can see that the interface has changed and what's highlighted is this multi-track tab over here. Uh, we can always pop back to see the view, uh, view the waveform of those single takes that we did and we can see our session here under tutorial-01.sesx, uh, okay? So we'll go back into the multi-track editor and what we have is essentially the same layout, right? Except for uh, now we have multiple tracks laid out here and you can see their name here with track one, track two, track three, and a bunch of other uh, tools and uh, buttons that we can select. So let's go ahead and click and drag and take our first take and just put it right at here, right at, here at the track one. Now, what's great about Audition is that it's a lot like any of your uh, video editing software where you can just simply drag into any track. And as you can see now, we're in track one and it's color coded. Now let's go ahead and grab track two. And now if I put it right underneath, it's probably gonna sound terrible, right? So this is a this test is recording a for... So that, that's one way to create some kind of disconcerting effect by having multiple voices at the same time speaking, and that may be something that you want to try to do. Or if you want to add some effects like echo and so on, that, that's uh, totally up to you. But for the sake of this, I just wanted to show here's how we can take two tracks or two uh, clips and put them in this multi-track editor. Again, you have the same... Uh, scroll bar here that you can zoom in and out of the uh, the track so that you can get a better sense of what's happening. Um, I should mention that you can click and drag and that's what we would call scrubbing through the audio if you want to um, listen to a little bit of a preview as you're moving across the across the timeline. So let's see what happens now that I've set the two tracks up next to each other like this. Oh. Here we go. Uh, this must be my autosave that popped up because I had not saved this session yet after these changes. So we'll go ahead and click yes. 
One or more media files used by this multi-track sessions are located outside the session folder. Would you like to copy these media files into the session folder? Now, this is a good pop-up to uh, discuss because I actually don't want to do this because I want to keep my um, audio track saved in that external folder that I showed earlier. Let's see if I can bring that up um, over here. So you should be able to see this. Now I've recorded these takes in this uh, in in this folder right on my machine on my external hard drive. So I don't want to move them into the C drive, which is where this uh, session is being recorded. So I'm going to click no. All right, gang. Well, when I clicked no just then, the uh, software crashed and it booted me out. And so um, that can happen from time to time. Now I opened the uh, the session back up or the application back up, and then it brought me right back into uh, this view that we were at before. Now just. Quickly, I wanted to show you that I clicked no because I didn't want to add those uh, recordings into my C drive. But what we'll be able to see here, and as I showed you before, here's the um, external drive, my Seagate backup labeled uh, J. And then we have the three or the two takes there. And if I show this one over here, bump. Now you can see on my C drive, I have the, um, the recorded session here, the tutorial 0101. And so it actually didn't, um, it didn't copy the takes into this session folder, which is good because that means I'm maintaining the uh, file structure that I want and, and, and managing my hard drive storage. So that was just a quick note for that. Um, now let's get back to editing this uh, multi-track session. So the next thing that I wanted to show you was that if you actually want to take both clips and put them on one uh, timeline like this, or one track, I should say, um, this is a way for you to see how you can actually blend clips. And when I click and drag one take on top of the other, you'll see this visual indication of the what is like a cross dissolve, essentially. And it's basically, well, in audio, it would be called a cross fade, right? So the longer that I uh, overlap them, the more cross fading you will see happening. And that can be useful if you want to make all of it into one track and then lay in sound on another track. Or you can always try to do it by overlapping the clips like we showed you in the beginning of uh, this multi-track editing. But then each individual track will maintain its uh, decibel level and it will just roll on top of each other instead of actually fading in, uh, fading out the one and then fading in the new one, right? So that's sort of the difference of doing that. And I'm just clicking and dragging to change these. Now, if you need to actually edit these files while they're in, um, in the multi-track editor here, it's pretty easy. If you want to just uh, trim the ends of it or trim the, uh, you know, change the start time, you can hover your mouse over the edge of it and then click and drag and you can, you know, create your, your new clip like that. Now we've basically done that non-destructively as you can pull the clip back out. And you'll see this is similar to when we get into Adobe Premiere and Resolve when you're editing effects like, or editing clips, you can, you know, basically shorten the clip of what's used in the, uh, in the editor by clicking and dragging the handles on the end. Now, if for, for some reason you need to actually cut it, uh, and make two clips out of it, you can come up here and grab the razor tool and come in and actually just clip it like that. Now, my tool is still a razor, as you can see with the little icon there. Um, so I'll go back to change it to the move tool, which is the V shortcut. And now I can click and drag and, and add space. You know, I talked before about giving your voiceover breathing room. And so this is one way that you could do to create breathing room. Now, Let's say that this is all good and you're happy with the edit. I'll push this one back together just so it's a little bit tighter. Um, what we wanna do is go ahead and save our file. I don't wanna do that again. And see this time it didn't, uh, it didn't crash, so that was great. So now I wanna figure out how I export this in order to use it in the video edit, right? So what we'll do here is we'll come up to the file and we will hit export and we want to 
multi-track mix down, right? We want to export the entire session because that's, that is what we're going to use in the edit. So I'll come over here to entire session and we get a similar pop-up uh, box like we've seen before. We have the, the file format here. We can choose wave uh, AIFF or MP3, whatever you desire. Um, but I'll keep it as wave. And then I want to make sure that I'm saving it in the right directory so that I can know where my files live. And I'm going to bring it back into this one and uh, make sure the file name is how I want it, which is fine there. And the same, the sample type is going to be the same as the source 48 K, which is what we were happy with. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now that should have saved and yep, we can see here that we have this uh, tutorial mixed down wave file. So let's go over to the waveform and we will just double click this to open it. Okay. And now we should be able to tell that we've got a stereo uh, recording Adobe audition. So this is just a second take for, and now you can see just like we had taken, had take one and two. Now we have take one and two uh, blended together like we had set up in the multi-track. So essentially this visualization that we see here of track one and or take one on track one and take two on track two is the same as when we come into the waveform uh, single uh, waveform editor and we can see this is obviously from track one and this is track two saved out and now if I go back into the folder where I've been saving it, you can see that we have the mix down dot uh, wave, which will be the file format that we'll use in the edit. Okay, so that's basically all you need to know for the basics uh, of recording your voice into Adobe Audition. Uh, as usual, let me know if you have any questions.